Hi everybody, uh, John with you. Welcome back to my channel. Um, time for a, a moody mood music video haul. I haven't done one in a while. Um, and our thrift stores here in Honolulu, not all of them, but some of them have uh, reopened during the past week or so, week or two. And I have gone a few times and uh, did a bit of hauling as far as my easy listening records go for um, for myself and for my radio station, Moody Mood Music. So I thought I would show you uh, some of what I have picked up recently. And my thing pretty much is, uh, you know, dollar record bands. Everything is like cheap for me, a dollar or less. Uh, and even the box sets, I just get very cheap. So let's just look at what, what I picked up. Now I haven't, obviously I haven't recorded all of these yet or digitized them, but um, I've, I haven't listened to all of them all the way through, but I've kind of spot checked all of them or ones I wasn't sure what exactly it was. Um, this one, Sergio Frenchy, some male vocalists here I got um, within me. Great, you know, voice this guy has, so what's not to love? This one, um, yeah, I just debated about a little bit because I thought, oh, that name is familiar, but I don't really, I'm not exactly sure. Tony Martin, um, I couldn't remember exactly what he sounded like. And I have to say, when I brought this home and, you know, spun a little bit of it, I'm like, darn, this guy has a really nice voice. <laughs> So yeah, definitely some of that coming up. Uh, this one I got, I was just curious about it. Um, it was recorded here in Hawaii. Uh, it's a Latin American album at La Strada Restaurant. Um, <laughs> it's a duo. They're called, and I kid you not, Nacho and Alfonso. Nacho and Alfonso. Pretty nice on a Casvel, which must be some sort of, I don't know, small label. Anyway. Uh, Ray Charles singers, I always pick them up when I see them. Um, Always need lots of vocal groups. It can't all be Ray Conniff, and there are six million Ray Conniff albums, and I love Ray Conniff, but you know, you gotta have other groups in there too. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they're nice. Um, well, this one just because I didn't actually have it, and you know, it's kind of a no brainer to have some Burt Bacharach doing his own compositions. That's goes without saying. I should have had that a million years ago, really. Uh, then I picked, they had a, the one uh, Goodwill that they had a whole bunch of Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians, which is, uh, you know, very, and maybe not exactly format 100%, but um, is, you know, very early, early, easy listening. Um, and I kind of wish I'd gotten them all in retrospect, but I didn't. I just picked out a couple. I said, just get two of them. So I got this Longines Symphonet. Uh, bonus album that must have come with some set, I don't know which one, uh, but Guy Lombard on his Royal Canadians Midnight Melodies. I love the, uh, the backs of the Longines Symphonette records that, you know, show you the whole process of how amazing it is. Everyone's in lab coats. It's very scientific. It's very scientific. Then I got this one. Pick is a Pickwick 33 one, so it's like a compilation of other stuff. But Guy Lombardo, Red Roses for a Blue Lady. I picked this one up because I wanted to hear the song "Made the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose." I did. It's pretty funny. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. May an elephant caress you with its toes. May your wife be plagued with runners in her hose. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. 
And I just got a couple Percy Faith I didn't have because, you know, you gotta. It's like certain things are so super standard for mood music. Percy Faith, uh, Montavani, Andre Castellani, it's, you know, you gotta have them. And, yeah, who doesn't like who doesn't like a good Percy Faith? This one I'm real. I heard some listen to some of it. Very cool. Uh, Percy Faith, Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, then, of course, always looking for, you know, kind of these nice instrumental orchestral things. Dancing violins, didn't know who they were, never heard of them, but it was on London Records, so I figure it must be, must be tasteful, like Montovani or something. And then it's uh, also, I realized, a Snuff Garrett production, so that adds a whole different angle to it. Um, and then these are, these are actually kind of... You know, with orchestra, with violins, but fairly somewhat contemporary at the time um, arrangements. <laughs> This one I was excited to find, and it is, it's very enjoyable. It's the Gra Bob Crew Orchestra, bit of a pop icon himself, uh, plays the four, the, this is the Bob Crew Orchestra, plays the four seasons hits. So these are like, like super cool orchestra arrangements of the four season songs, which it's a great album. I can't even tell you, it's great. <laughs> I mean, you know, walk like a man, dawn, go away, big girls don't cry, it's great. <laughs> great stuff. And then finally, as far as just the records, Tony Bennett, I love Tony Bennett. Uh, Tony Bennett sings the great songs of the great hits of today. Now this is very cool. I thought, well, you gotta get this one because it's all like super groovy, right? Tony Bennett being super groovy. But, um, it's kind of weird because, I mean, I like it and I love it, but uh, some of the songs he's actually like narrating part of the way through, which I found kind of odd and I kind of wish they hadn't done that, but oh well. Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, lives in a dream, waits at the window, I will win the worship. Okay, then I did pick up a couple of box sets just because they were there and they were, you know, cheap. They ended up charging me um, $4.99 a piece for them. So one of them had, um, this one had nine records. I think the other one had six or seven or something or eight, whatever. But, uh, so why not, you know? Happiness is from the Reader's Digest. Now, not in absolutely perfect condition. There's some stuff going on here, which uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna guess that's little mouses or rat or something at some point somewhere. But don't worry, I've cleaned it and sanitized it, but yeah, this one's, and sometimes I get these things really because I love the paperwork. If they have the paperwork, that just really makes it for me. And this has some of it. So this was a nine record set. And it's, these are all sort of happy songs. Happy songs by a variety of different artists. Um, you know, and as you, per usual, has the nice sleeves. It has, each record has a little information about every song, which is amazing. And I totally love that. And then in addition, this one, uh, came with a little booklet that just describes it. Very cool. Um, I mean, sort of, I don't really know what the purpose of this was because it kind of just talks a little bit about the set. Um, and then it, it, this was released in 1970 or 71. Well, it, the 
booklet says 71 and the records say 70, 1970, so I don't know why. But it also came with this cool thing in it from Reader's Digest. A 1971 engagement calendar, which whoever either never knew it was there or just didn't use it or whatever, but you know, keeping up to date. And then it has the beautiful, I always love these catalog books. This I love these when they're inside of here. Just information about other sets that they have. Um, oops. Promotional things, 25% off. They talk about pleasure programming. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about that, but. Uh, and then it's just a catalog featuring the many other six thousand box sets that were made that are um, literally taking up space in so many thrift stores these days not record shops I never see them in record shops do you ever I never see box sets in an actual used record store thrift stores all over the thrift stores so there's that one happiness is then I got a second one called all star salute to um, I can't read backwards to today's golden songs <laughs> same thing probably the same owner I'm looking little looks like little mice maybe or something I don't know and then the rest of it's okay so it must have been stored in a closet or addict or something for a while rather than just out now this one um, yeah this is an eight records and these were contemporary songs at the time now this one's a little bit later this one is 1981 so going a little bit later the sleeves do not have notes about the song however it came with a uh, booklet that <laughs> so yeah. um, that has what was in former you know sets on the back of the albums and this one is just in a booklet a little information about each song and again what's cool about this one is the catalog ordering catalog and it is different because this one's as I said a little bit later so it's 1981 so it looks a little different than uh, most of the other ones I have, which are earlier than that. So, and, and some of these are definitely later, later releases that I see in here. Some of them I haven't really, some of them I've seen, but some of them I really haven't seen around that much. So maybe they weren't at this point in time made in quite such great quantity or whatever. I don't know. But yeah. Love the uh, catalogs so much, I can't even tell you. Love this one, I have this Aloha Hawaii one. Yeah, anyway. Very 1981, you know, the font and the colors and everything, I love it, love it. That is what I have gotten on my thrift store journeys, past couple trips, um, of easy listening for my radio station, Moody Mood Music, which you are, of course, invited to listen to. It's free to listen to. The link is down below. It's on live365.com. And uh, that one, I have Moody Mood Music, and I also have a Hawaiian one for my gigantic Hawaiian record collection about 2,500 records, so that's called Hawaiian Hi-Fi. So you can listen to either of those for free. The link is gonna be below. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. And I welcome any comments if you have any of these records or thoughts or whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. I hope you guys have a good week. Thanks for watching.